Oh, I'm sorry. I was wool gathering. I see we've arrived at the Melody Flora's residence. It's quite impressive. But that's to be expected, considering that she is still the majority owner of the Flower Cybernetics Group, despite retiring from day-to-day -day operations at the company. I wonder how she and Hayden first began working together. Sorry, back on task. Is there anything you'd like to know before we head inside? Flower Cybernetics was established in the early 2000s by Melody's mother, Antonella. It started out developing cutting-edge medical tech, including advanced prosthesis and nanoparticle diagnostic and treatment technologies. They were vastly successful when they perfected the first synthetic nerve mesh, allowing direct connection and control between the nervous system and a cybernetic prosthesis. The majority of their early projects were defense technologies for the American military. Developing ruggedized military prosthesis for use on injured soldiers, and then eventually electively for special forces. This research line culminated in the development of brain-controlled androids as shock troops, long since barred by international law. Melody took over the company from her aging mother, and she fought against developing further military hardware from that point on. She pushed the company to use the BCA technology for the company's original goals of medical advancement, as well as developing the first direct link virtual reality implants. The company is largely successful on a global scale, despite continued legislative movement against extensive cybernetic use, especially brain implants. Hmm, not a whole lot. She's largely private, in contrast to her mother's penchant for courting a media circus. Several biographies of former flower executives show her as intensely passionate about demilitarizing the company to the point of absolute viciousness in the boardroom. But it's been a long time since her days of fighting for the company, and she's since stepped away from the helm. There's talk that she's lost her spine in her old age, but... Well, I take that with a grain of salt. She may have retreated from the corporate battlefield, but you don't change the entire direction of a company as large as Flower if you're a quitter. Stay on your toes. He did, and I can't shine much light on that. I know that System 1 worked with Flower to help develop the first operating systems for the Direct Link Virtual Reality Implants, so perhaps it happened during that time. Also, Flower eventually went with a different company for future models of the implant, but there was never any public talk of a personal falling out between the heads of the companies. I'll scrape the mesh for more rumors, but they'll only be that, rumors. I can do my best to parse fact from fiction, but it blurs too much for me to be sure what's real. No time like the present, then. as good as mine. Mine says we can go in. Should we?
have been trying to increase my usage of colloquialisms. Is Swanky too out of date? It's certainly before my time. Oh, Miss Flores! Excuse us for the intrusion. My name is Turing, and... Oh, I know who you are. Hey, I can explain. I know you don't like Dr. Fairlight very much, but I assure you there's a situation. Fairlight? Hmm. I didn't realize Hayden's research had become a charity case. Though I suppose little boy Yannick will throw money at anything that raises his profile on the mesh. Wait, you know Hayden? Also, we actually only just met Dr. Fairlight yesterday. Oh, that's too bad. Now Pat won't have to eat you. Though I'm not sure your gears would have been good for his digestion. Actually, madam, I'm not comprised of gears. Well, either way, he's on a diet. This philosophy is how I lead my life. Sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes the bear, well, he eats you. Do you understand? Not really. No, I don't have all day to entertain you, Turing, nor your new friend. Not even for Hayden. You don't have time to waste if you're going to find him, either. mistaken? That might be why the temperature controls are set so low in here. I wasn't aware you knew the scientific name of the species. Ooh, has my interest in proper nomenclature started to rub off on you? Plenty! Have you heard of a Kermode bear, also known as a spirit bear? Or he could be a white faced black bear, or even a pisley. But he's not, it's a polar bear.
Don't. I'm watching that. Definitely a polar bear. Unless she dyed his fur. Yep, definitely a polar Please stop. is more of a royal figurehead at Flower these days. The group's board of directors make most of the major decisions in consultation with FCG's chief officers. If you were one of Fairlight's worker bees, you wouldn't have made it through the door. So why are you here to badger me about poor Hayden? You have me at a disadvantage, Ms. Flores. You seem far ahead of us on this matter. Just call me Melody, darling. And of course. But I'll share a secret or two with you. I have so many questions. Do you know what's happened to Hayden? I wish I didn't. Maybe you don't want to either. Please, Melody, any information you might have. We haven't had access to any of his research notes and couldn't track down any collaborators he may have been working with. Perhaps if we know more, we might be able to nail down a solid motive. Well, I don't know if I can speculate on that, beyond the usual corporate infighting. Not that Parallax is known for that, of course. We had been catching up recently, and he mentioned feelings of being watched. 
He started to worry he had been discussing your development with the wrong people. When he stopped returning my calls, and now that you've shown up with a total stranger, it becomes clear what happened. I... I see. Can you tell us anything else about his disappearance? Oh, I'm afraid not, dear. I've been around long enough to know what's coincidence and what isn't. We were hoping you might be able to shine some light on my origins. Fairlight mentioned that you had worked with Hayden in the past. I see Hayden didn't neglect curiosity in your personality makeup. Well, you and I haven't properly met, but considering how often Hayden badgered me for design schematics of Flower's latest neural implants, I might as well be your aunt. We'll go with that. I wouldn't mind being an aunt, even to a blue-headed robot. I'm touched, Melody. Well then, I'm willing to answer your questions for now. see the connection between your company and Hayden's research into machine sapiens. Oh, Hayden wasn't researching machine sapiens. At least not primarily. Not to diminish the importance of your creation, Turing. But it's best you know the truth. Hayden is mainly interested in developing a way to transfer human consciousness into a machine matrix. You can see why neural implants would obviously be an integral part of that. Oh, I didn't realize... The concept of transferring the human mind into a computer has been an attractive goal for decades. Functional immortality is... powerful lure. The brain is an immensely complicated machine, and even though we know the right buttons to push to make pictures show up, we still can't replicate the entire thing as a technological construct. Even with the virtual reality implants, we're really just relying on the brain's ability to make sense of nonsensical signals. So Hayden decided the best way to make a machine more like the human brain would be to work in the opposite direction. Instead of mimicking how the human brain worked, he started writing code that mimicked the functioning of the human mind. Think of it like convergent evolution. Two species adapt in similar ways, but on completely different continents. Hayden is a crack programmer when it comes to information collating. It's why Parallax hired him when they did. So he wrote a bunch of self-modifying learning algorithms that were, <laughs> frankly, baffling and let them loose. Poke and prod them here and there to make sure they value the same things humans do. And we eventually end up with you, Jury. Interesting. Hayden never revealed any of this to me. I imagine he's pretty tight-lipped. You were the first prototype he considered a real success, and he was afraid of contaminating your development before he had a chance to make good observations. Phew, if you can even call it involvement. It's a small city. And if you're in the tech sector, you are never more than two degrees removed from anyone else. When he started looking into this pet project of his, he came right up to my door and demanded access to the research logs behind our earlier implants. Cheeky. 
but it was impactful and disruptive, as they like to say around here. I couldn't care less about Flowers' patents anymore, so I gave him what he wanted, just to see what he would do. I'm frankly more impressed than I expected I would be, but <laughs> don't tell him that. Don't worry. I won't. Oh, that was a compliment, dear. I didn't say that. Hayden was quite interested in touring, even if he is just a step to further research. I... In fact, he was preparing to publish his findings involving touring, and I know it's going to make one heck of a splash in the scientific community. See, the most impressive part about you, Turing, is that you're surprisingly stuck. I assure you, Melody, my construction involves only the latest and greatest in ROM prototype technology. Exactly. You're not off the shelf, but you're still just a souped-up ROM, more or less like every other one out there. Your personality algorithms are impressive, but they don't require some new space-age technology to work. Hayden is going to propose that human consciousness transference does not require special brain-like hardware architecture, but merely the right software wrapper to interface with the hardware. Much like how you function. Hmm. I suppose that is correct. Still, my personality matrices do take up substantial amounts of my processing power. Wouldn't custom hardware have capabilities that better serve such a demanding specialized task? Sure. There's still plenty of reason in trying to make a computer that works just like a human brain. Efficiency is an important part of that. But if Hayden can emulate the human mind in existing technology, it means we can start the immortality now, rather than waiting for hardware to catch up with Hayden's software. Frankly, I'm not terribly interested in living forever, but there's more than enough people who are. Thank you for this, Melody. I understand so little of my origins. Well, I'm sorry I don't know more of the specifics. Hayden kept me up to date on his progress, but only in the vaguest of ways. If you can hunt down his notes, I'm sure they'll tell you more. Of course, we'll keep looking. Now, perhaps we could ask some other questions? Sure, sure. Oh, hell, that old bastard and I have been flashing daggers at each other for the better part of 20 years. I contracted out the software development for our first-gen Direct Link VR Neural Implants to System 1. Things were going great, but after the first model sold like gangbusters, Yannick tried to get into bed with me, literally. I turned him down, very politely, I might add, and then, suddenly, all of the cooperation between our companies dried up. We've been at it back and forth ever since. I'd be damned careful about trusting him if I were you. He's a snake. And he'll do anything he can to get what he wants. Still, I suppose if he tried again now, I might not turn him down. <laughs> it would be fun to needle him about me still having my own company when he doesn't have his. <laughs> I can get back to my retirement. Thank you for your time, Melody. We'll be in touch later. 
Oh, one more piece of information for you, if you'd like it. I've got the contact info for a Vincent Mensa, who I think might be of help to you. Vincent was working more closely with Hayden inside Parallax. Mostly on his company-approved research on data collating algorithms for the mesh. I'll send him a message and ask him to meet you somewhere. He owes me a favor anyway, and might be able to give you some more information on anything else Hayden may have been working on. That would be fantastic, Melody! Perhaps Golden Gate Park? Be careful, Turing. I don't like Fairlight's stench all over this scenario. Don't show him too many of your cards. Cards? This euphemism is unfamiliar to me. <sighs> don't tell him anything if you can. Fairlight is more dangerous the more he's informed. Thank you, Aunt Melody. Wish us luck.